Captain's log, day 69. It's 4.20 right now, p.m. Um, I can't remember the last time I haven't been at this garage. The walls are starting to close in on me. I'm getting delirious. Who am I talking to? No, but seriously, uh, we're back at the garage again. Uh, did a little bit of tweaking with Jack Black. He seems to be running pretty decently. Uh, put a different tack in him. If you remember, we did have the Sun Pro one right here. And uh, Pops picked this up from a homie who accidentally ordered two. So we got it pretty cheap. Uh, it's brand new. And it'll have a nice bright shift light for him. So he doesn't take this all the way to 7,000 RPM again. Because I would like this thing to shift like around 5,700, 5,800. Because I don't think it'll go too far past that. So I don't see any reason to really wind it out. I mean, when I was driving it the other day, it felt like it was wanting to like nose over around 5,500, so. Anyway, uh, today we are not focusing on that truck at all. We are actually focusing on Goldie Hawn a little bit. And in particular, the transmission for Goldie Hawn. So the Circle D converter should show back up uh, in, in, in the next couple days. I think like Wednesday, something like that. So I'm going to try to get the uh, HD2 kit and everything ready in this transmission so that once the converter does show up, we can just start throwing everything back in the truck and uh, I can have a nice fun daily again. So here is the HD2 kit, Transgo uh, kit. It's a reprogramming kit, even though it's all hardware, you like drill shit and put different springs and there's separator plates, blah, 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 all that stuff. And it does, it is very, very detailed instructions. So this video will probably be me just literally going step by step in the instructions. That way nobody can call me stupid for fucking it up because I'm doing exactly what I'm told. Anyway, uh, I will, if the link is still available, I'll post it in the description down below because I got this for a hundred and I think like 105 bucks or 110 bucks, something like that. And they're normally like 140, 150. So I just did some searching on Amazon and eventually uh, actually stumbled across it. I had one in my cart for like 135 and I was like, yeah, I'll, that extra five, 10 bucks, I'm happy with that. And then this one showed up as like a, like one of those people also viewed this sort of thing. And I was like, fuck yeah, let's do that. Before we start throwing that in this, um, and I'm not sure I'm going to drill the pump or anything out yet. Um, I've got the one from the other transmission already drilled out. If I feel like it, I might throw that one in here. Um, but before we start doing anything to this, it uh, definitely, Definitely needs to be cleaned. My God, look at that. That is just some unholy mess. I like to try out as many different like degreasers and stuff as possible. So I've used the Purple Power, Simple Green, a uh, few like, I'm not seeing any here. There's that one that I can't remember what it's called. And one that you guys keep suggesting over and over again in the comments is Easy Off, the oven cleaner. So I didn't get that. I got the Dollar General version because it was half price. This was like $2.50 and the Easy Off was like $4.95, something like that. So that's what I'm going to just douse this entire transmission in. Like literally, I got two cans. I plan on using all of them because uh, I don't mind getting dirty, but if I can avoid it, I would love to. So let's, uh, we're going to do that. I was not sure if that was gonna hold. As it is, I'm still pretty nervous. I basically was worried about like all the weight of the transmission being held on by those two little ears of the bell housing. Cause that thing's fucking fully loaded still. Like torque converter fluid, everything. And uh, I would be really fucking sad if that thing just snapped those ears off, dropped, destroyed the floor, destroyed the transmission. I'd be pretty bummed. So this makes me feel a little bit more comfortable. A little bit.
and now we <coughs> and now we wait. <coughs> Fuck. That is a whole lot better. Still a little bit on there here and there, but that's fine. That's really not a big deal at all. At least now we can actually see where all the plugs are. <laughs> That'll be much more pleasant to work on. So let's get it back in the garage and we'll set it up on the engine stand over here. All right, now that we got it up on the stand, everything's drained out, we got it flipped over. Let's start pulling things apart uh, inside here. First, we got to unplug the wiring, get that out of the way, pull this rod out of the way. That's fucking cool. Jesus. These new wiring harnesses are cheap for it. I'll just fucking get a new one. All right, wiring's out of the way. Now we can take this rod off. Let's just, just turn you out of the way. All right, now it's all just the uh, valve body bolts. There we go. Now there's eight little check balls in here. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. And the rest are hidden under the fluid. <laughs> anyway, we're only going to be putting seven of those back in. All right, so now that we got the valve body off, we got this little horsepower mounting off. There's these two springs here. I'm going to leave them there right now so I don't lose them and fuck anything up. Now we can pull the separator plate and gaskets off. So we got to get under it. I do have most of the bolts uh, still in here. There we go. All right, so from this point on, I'm going to strictly follow the Transgo instructions. It's super detailed, but uh, step one says to drill an eighth inch hole right here between, uh, between this section and this section on there, uh, kind of angling it down, making sure not to nick the face of this or anything. So right there, going this way, we're gonna drill an eighth inch hole. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is center punch this wall right here so that the drill bit doesn't try and walk too much because it is gonna be quite an angle. And uh, if you're like me and your real center punch is broke, you can take a old screwdriver and just ground it to a point. And this thing does pretty good. Now the Transgo kit does come with, I believe, all the drill bits you need. And now, once you're done with that, we step it up to a 3 16 bit, which is also included in the kit. Man, I, I got real close to that freaking thing there. All right, so this one, so with that first one, you're gonna wanna be extra careful to not get anywhere near over here, because obviously this one's much larger. All right, we're done with step one. Step two is to discard the original springs that go here for this plug. You can see kind of on this, like it's a diagram. I didn't catch that at first, but it goes in right here, which will be this guy right here. So we have to knock this dowel pin out. And uh, I don't know if it has a new one. No, it does not. So we're gonna have to knock that out without destroying it, pull all that out, and then it says, for slightly firmer shifts, use this spring. For even firmer shifts, use this spring. If you use them both together, is that like retarded shifts? I don't know, it doesn't say. So let's pop this out, pull it apart, and uh, throw some spring in there. This only come out one way. It does. All right, see it didn't say that to me, but that, it seems like it would only come out one way, so keep that in mind. I'm going to see if I can set it right there so I don't lose it. All right, let's bring these out the way that uh, they come. So first is this little slug. It has the hole to the outside. 
here's this here's the stock spring let's compare it I don't know they feel similar-ish compared to this one I don't know fairly negligible I don't think we have to pull the rest out it looks like so that can go in there let's go with even firmer shifts and now we're going to put the new plug in and I don't know why but it doesn't come with the new o-ring there we go so now we're gonna put the new plug in and I don't know why but it doesn't come with the o-ring on it but I'm going to just smear that in a little bit of the tranny fluid and then uh, put it on it and it says threaded side out just so you know make sure you're moving freely you are nothing's bound up so we're good there let's put the plug or the dowel pin back in just make sure it's under the surface there let's go just a little bit further all right we're good there all right so step two we're done with we're going to move on to step three which is removing the actuator filter parts um, which is just like everything in here on the other side so it looks like we're going to install a new tapered plug and a new o-ring um, does it have a new filter? I'm not seeing a new filter uh, hopefully this filter is good and a new end plug so let's uh let's get to work on that real quick spin it around to this side we got to knock this dowel pin out now just let it hang over a touch odds are this one probably goes up as well there we go See if this will work. Just real gentle taps. Just so you guys know. And there is the filter. We're going to have to take this o ring off. Come on. All right. O ring is off. It'll set you over there. And that is all that is in there. Alright, so we are putting in... This is what we are putting in. Here is a new plug that is going to go at the end of the filter. And then there is a spring in here that we are putting in. And then this new end plug and the dowel pin that we pulled out is going to go through that. Instead of butt up against the face. Let's use some of our good clean tranny fluid throw that on it hopefully yeah that's what I was trying to avoid that is what I was trying to avoid all right so I think I'm going to have to put pressure on it against the end of this uh, extension over here that way I can hold everything vertical. So here's the problem I'm having. This isn't going in far enough to get the dowel pin in. And on the instructions, it specifically says, uh, if outer plug won't go in, grind this outer edge of the filter slightly. Uh, and apparently that'll do something. So I don't know if I'm supposed to, it doesn't actually say if I'm supposed to grind it this way, grind the diameter or grind it like this. I would assume since these are the same uh, thickness, I would grind it this way. By the way, the filter looks fine. So I'm going to get a file and do that. All 
All right, there we go. There we go. Dow pin is in. Let's knock it down just a little bit past the surface. There we go, step three is done. All right, so step four, we are flipping this thing back over. Oops. We're installing this little relief valve plate deal, which means setting this plate right here. So we're going to set this here and then use this as a guide to drill a 3 16 hole through the center, which will go through this side into the other side. And then it will, uh, let's see, it'll have this little springed valve here on It'll have this little springed valve here on this side, so when it builds up pressure, it'll lift it and blow it by. So we just need to set up a couple of these guys. And it comes with some bolts to use the valve body bolts to tighten it down. Or it comes with some nuts, I mean. All right. And then just try and get it as centered as possible. And then we're just going to use the same 3 16 drill bit that we used on that little uh, like wall bypass relief. We're going to use this as a guide. Let's clean the drill bit off first. I actually think I'm going to... I'm going to start with the 8th inch one. Yeah, I'm going to start with the 8th inch one. That way I don't nick this plate too much. There we go. It's right, uh, it's right through there. I don't know if you can see or not. Let's pull this back off. Now that we know exactly where the hole needs to be, we can just blop. These are some delightfully sharp drill bits. <laughs> all right, let's clean all the metal out of there before we go any further. Now all the metal is out of there. We can, uh, this part might be a little tricky, but we've got to we got this little like valve here that you're not going to be able to see, but we got a valve there with a spring on it. And then we've got to push it through this hole, keeping pressure on it, and then get the clip right here on it. So this might be a little bit of a pain in the dick. We'll see. All right. Clip is in. There we go. That made it a whole lot easier. Now that that's on, it says to kind of get this all centered and shit. So we'll do that and then hold pressure on it. And then it says to tap on the stem here to kind of seat it into that hole. Let's see if I can do this without fucking up my fingers. I don't want to tap it too much. I mean, I don't think we'll need to get crazy with it. I think it just needs to seat. So if we just put some pressure on it and let it seat, I think we're good there. Yeah, it says to install that last once everything else is done, because obviously you'll have to bolt the uh, valve body up. So, that is steps four and five. Let's move on to numero seis. All right, I took a second to like clean up the workspace because there was a bunch of metal shavings and shit everywhere, so I wiped that down and sprayed off the valve body so that there's no metal shavings left in that. And now we can move on to step six, which is obviously it says discard the original plate. I already kind of did that. And here's where we drill out the holes for like the shift firmness. Um, it says uh, holes A, B, and C are for shift feel selection, which are these ones. And I kind of marked them so that I don't mix them up and drill the wrong ones. But there's that one, 
that one, and this one. And I believe that it says that this is for second gear, third gear, fourth gear. So what it says is for like an average shift feel, use a 0.086 bit for a softer one, 0.076, and for a firm shift, 0 0.96, 0 0.096. And it just so happens that the only one that they sent me is the 0 0.096. So it uh, looks like I'm gonna be doing that one. <laughs> now again, I circled them so they don't get them mixed up. This is definitely something you'll want to double check because there's a few that are like real close to each other. Like there's this one and then that one. So definitely take your time, make sure you don't drill the wrong one. that's that that's all drilled all right and then it's worth mentioning that if you have like a 93 or a 92 and earlier transmission it'll have this part that's not vented and it says to drill it out and then use a later uh, uh, PCS solenoid I don't have to worry about that because mine is vented you can see right there but if you're working with an earlier one it says to drill a hole there and make sure that your uh, solenoid does not have a screen I believe yeah, do not use a PCS solenoid that has a screen on this end. Uh, replace it with a 93 to 2003 solenoid, uses the same connector and it works fine. So continuing on with step six, we are starting to mess with the accumulator body, or correctly known as a horsepower mountain. Um, the only changes you're making on this page is replacing the third accumulator spring and installing the new Transgo plate. All right, so it says A, discard the original third spring and install the new white spring, which would be this one if it'll show on camera that it is actually white. Uh, B, install gasket onto accumulator housing. Install the full size gasket and the new Transgo plate onto the valve body. Align the plate, blah, 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 using the Z holes. Install the accumulator housing and tighten the bolts. All right, it looks like the only thing we're doing is just replacing this spring and then using like the new gasket and shit. These are the two original springs. It looks like we're getting rid of this long motherfucker. And that's where the white one's gonna go, which will be on this right here. And you keep trying to fall out, so I'm gonna put you there. And then we're reusing the original one. It says eight coils. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight coils. Cool. So we're reusing you. And then it says on some models there will be like a spring in little deal there. This one did not have it, so not to worry about it. Oh yeah, should probably put the new fucking gasket in, retard. Good thing we got a nice clean puddle over there. Let me just double check. It can only go that way looking at all the holes, how it lines up. So, let's make sure that part seats. Just taking it to where it's barely touching it, because... Because I do actually, occasionally like to uh, do things the right way. So I didn't want to reef it down with the uh, gun. Take some of that leverage off and check them again. All right, we are good there. Let's uh, smear some trans fluid all over this to help hold the next gasket in place. I'm trying to make sure I use only the clean trans fluid. All right. And there's that gasket. Cool. Now this is ready to go back in the transmission. Aside from, we have to take out one check ball. All right, so again, back to the diagram. It lists off all the check balls. There are eight of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And here would be the eighth, but we're gonna omit that one from the reassembly. So 
If we look, it's in like this little cavernous area right there, still covered in fluid. But uh, there we go. So that one will stay out here. So let's see, the only other things that we are changing here are uh, some new springs and a new like bushing deal here. And then whether or not yours is like this will determine whether or not you need this spacer. If it has that stem or not, if it has a stem, obviously spacer. If it doesn't have the stem, no spacer. And then it has a new bolt here with a hole in it that will just replace one, it looks like. Yeah, I think it'll replace this uh, Torx one. Let's make sure it's at the top there. Yep, it'll replace that one which I don't know if that's going to be super necessary, but we have it, so we might as well. It says a stronger fourth bolt and washer. So we have it, we might as well install it. And then aside from the stuff up here for like the bushing and whatever, the only other thing is to install this new orange spring for the uh, accumulator piston there. All right, so this one, it says we're reusing all that, so I'm not even going to fuck with it. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on camera or not, but this stock one here has a significantly bigger uh, diameter hole. Come on. Eh, you'll just have to take my word for it, but it's honestly probably close to like twice as big. It's retarded. So here's the old spring, and here's the new one. So it is a little shorter, like 3 16 maybe a quarter. They feel... This one's a little stiffer. This one I can get some compression out of first. That one, not much. So, let's plop you back down in there. I almost forgot about the, uh, the piston thing there. So I'm going to pull that out. It looks like it's just a snap ring, then you'll pull out the bushing and then the boost valve, washer, and then we're going to uh, put all this shit back in there. So, going to put in both of these springs and this guy, I think we're going to be reusing, is this a bushing and, okay, that makes more sense. This has the new boost valve in it, so we're not gonna be reusing the old one. Cool, that's awesome. All right, let's get that ripped out. All right, and that is that. That is the complete HD2 kit uh, install. Well, well, not complete, because I didn't uh, drill out the pump. It's not a bad idea to, but it's not 100% necessary, otherwise they wouldn't even suggest doing it in the vehicle where you can't pull the pump and stuff out. But um, most people are gonna do it just like this. Um, I may throw my other pump in because I already got that one drilled out. But for now, this is pretty much everything. The only thing I didn't show is this last little bit where I'm just bolting it down and uh, putting the wiring in place. And I need to get a new harness anyway because like most of these plugs broke. Like as soon as I even thought about looking at them, they just fucking snapped. So I'll probably pick up a new wiring harness. I don't think those are too expensive, like 40 bucks maybe. And it's a whole lot easier to do it now while it's outside the vehicle. 
Uh, I might steal one from my other transmission, but I might use that transmission in something, so I'll probably just play it smart and uh, get a new harness. But yeah, that is a Transgo HD2 kit install on a 4L80E transmission. Uh, this is a 94 transmission, so some things might be a little bit different from yours. I tried to be as detailed as I could going like step by step by step by step with the uh, instructions. Oh, the one thing, my camera died while I was uh, finishing this up. So I think the only thing that it missed was me like putting in the boost valve and bushing and stuff and then putting the snap ring in. I think it caught everything else. And then here's the internal upgrades if the trans is apart. You'll drill out a little bit here on the pump and then you'll drill out here on the face just to uh, prevent seal blowout. And then these are all springs for the direct clutch drum, which I wouldn't fucking worry about anyway. So, Transgo HD2 kit, I'm pretty happy with it. This is my first time ever installing it. And it really did not take long once I got the transmission actually cleaned and we got it put up on the uh, engine stand. I think it may be, let's see, what time is it? So it's 4.47 right now. I think I started probably like around two-ish, give or take, two, 2.30. And if I weren't trying to film it and worrying about camera angles and shit like that, it would have been done a whole lot quicker. So I think like an hour and a half isn't out of the question. So hope this helps anybody. Uh, if you're thinking about doing it, it's don't be intimidated. It's really simple. My glasses keep falling because there's tranny fluid all over everything. I somehow got some in my ear. Um, anyway, I hope this helps somebody. If you're thinking about doing the HD2 kit, fucking glasses. Uh, if you're thinking about doing the HD2 kit, don't be intimidated. It's really, really simple. I would say the most important thing is just take your time with it. Follow the instructions. They're really, really detailed. So there isn't a whole lot that you can really mess up aside from like if you're drilling the hole through the valve body, if it wanders too much and you nick the, uh, the face. But even then, as long as it doesn't like really fuck it up, you'll probably still be okay. So hope this video helps somebody. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. We'll see you next time.